Hi, I'm Phil Ashby. I'm a trained engineer and an ex Royal Marine Commando. I've got a real passion for military engineering, the guys who are first onto the battlefield and very often the last off it. Unfortunately, there still are millions of unexploded landmines around the world, but luckily, We've got a fantastic bit of kit. In fact, the guys here at Mindtech have developed what is considered to be the best mine detection vehicle available in the world at the moment. The MDV or the Pookie. This armour here, six millimetres of this shaped armour is more effective for the job it has to do than perhaps 200 millimetres of armour on a main battle tank. Really efficient. Right, this vehicle's got a lower ground pressure than the average man when they're walking with a shoe. So the idea is, even if it goes over an anti-personnel mine, the pressure's so low that nothing happens. No problem at all. Throttle in and we're away. Now, the visibility's not great from this thing, but on the other hand, I guess if you're in a minefield, you don't want massive windows all around you. So although we're going pretty slowly, this thing's not designed to go quickly. We've got to have a team on foot with a dog as well, actually following behind. The idea is slow and steady. And it's a really funny feeling as, a, as an ex-soldier sitting in this thing. As a soldier, you get used to doing things in a team. And for me, it would be the isolation of being in this thing, thinking that there was some bastard who'd put landmines underneath me who were trying to blow my legs off, and I'd have nobody to talk to about it. It'd really be quite frightening and quite isolating. What's the speed would you do in a minefield? In a minefield, you'd only be operating at walking speed, basically. It's a matter of, you know, very small kilometres an hour just for the detection work. Is that because the detection stuff on the front or because you've got the team behind you on foot? Well, for the actual detection for the loop on the front. I guess you've only got the amount of time between the device on the front going bleep, you then hear it and then stop before you actually run over the landmine itself. Yeah. Must right. be a frightening old business. It must be. Yeah. It must be. Glad I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you've not got a military background, do you? No, I am not. My background's welding. Ah, OK. So and Andy builds the builds the uh, engines and you weld it all together. Is that right? I built the whole thing up. Yeah. Any weak points in these things? I suppose the, the I underneath of the V. That's the strongest <laughs> bit, is it? There shouldn't be any weak points in it apart from the top. No air conditioning or no, no. airbags. No. Windscreen. Yes. Ah, there made will of, be. And the windscreen. So what's it made of? How does glass stop these? Um, never. It sort of slightly worried me. The glass on this is. Um, Approved by NATO, which will stop 762 ammunition. Like, the, at it. like you have in an armoured car? Yeah. Good yeah, strong stuff. 46 mil thick. Wow. So the thing goes beep, presumably you then stop. You mark the area. And then what What sort of marker do you put? Paint. Just normal bog standard paint? Uh, yeah, it's a water based paint, environmentally friendly. And how do they know then that it's um, a landmine as opposed to just a tin can or something by the road? I think this is the only time I've had to use climbing skills to actually get in the vehicle because of the shape of the hull. It's an overhang to get in. Oh, I'm not convinced this is designed for tall people. So presumably steering wheel goes on here. Yep. So I'm sitting here imagining that I'm about to drive into a minefield. There's six millimetres of armoured steel and a good design that stops me and my backside from coming in contact with the landmine underneath me be pretty intimidating but these things work and, and it all just bolts on here does it yeah so it, and how do you then make sure here. that you don't just if you've got a metal detector I mean the whole vehicle's metal how do you stop detecting yourself well from the front of it we will put together a PVC piping frame okay P stands for plenty and we make it go bang yeah so in other words you don't dig the thing up all that you're gonna do is actually strap another explosive to the landmine and do what's known as controlled explosion, i.e. make sure you're a good distance away and blow up the landmine itself. Now, why? There's no roof on these things. What, what's all that about? What I like about this little beast, the Pookie, is the simplicity. You've got the engine on the outside. It's clear how the suspension works. But at the same time, what would worry me slightly is that simplicity. When I've been in a main battle tank, I've got 50 tonnes of armour, which is about this thick, protecting me. This little beast, I've got six millimetres, just six millimetres of armour plating. There's a twisted logic that landmines aren't actually always designed to kill. 
A dead soldier doesn't complain very much and he's quick to deal with. An injured soldier, well, naturally he's going to say a bit more about it and it's going to take two or three of his mates to try and save his life as well. During the Second World War, commandos were trained to keep low on their bellies, carefully probing for anti-tank mines using their pen knives or commando daggers. You can just imagine how frightening this was. Too hard and there'd be 20 pounds of explosive going off right in your face. I think I might have something here. <laughs> 